what do you think are the challenges for young people now in this year, especially those, for example, who are looking to get married in the coming months? How do you feel that they should best handle the next coming months, leaving aside what our government has put in place to protect people? I think they just have to be prepared to be very spiritual about this. Um, it must be very hard and even traumatic for some couples to be now told that they have to delay uh, or postpone their weddings. If they want to have a big wedding and a big reception, and we belong to a community or a culture that loves to have big weddings and big receptions, and, and uh, you know, the idea of having just five people at a wedding is staggering because where do you fit the parents in? I mean, you've got a... You've got a Presiding, you know, priest or etc. The presider. You got the marrying couple. That's three. You go got two left. It's just the witnesses. Well, if if both witnesses are a parent, then some you got still two parents in general missing out. So it's very painful. Now, if you're so inclined that you want to continue with your marriage in those circumstances, uh, so be it. And God bless you. You know, you, you're within your rights to do that. And you probably afterwards will plan some type of big reception down the, down the, in a date line somewhere else. Uh, but how can you have a wedding without your parents there? You tell me that. Or your brothers and sisters, or whatever. Now, if you feel the need that you have to postpone to delay it so you can have your proper, you know, wedding ceremony and reception and everyone there, etc., and your proper honeymoon and all that, that's going to be a trial. I, I, that would have tested me, no doubt. Um, it would be a rather source of great anxiety and upsetness for people. Some people are probably angry. It's a time for us to, to probably get into a higher spiritual view, which isn't going to be easy at first. A one of resignation, acceptance. Somehow see this as uh, uh, in the bigger picture of God's plan for your life and your marriage. Take what good can come out of this delay. Um, offer it up to God, the extra time you're waiting, the extra sacrifice for your future marriage. You just have to embrace it spiritually. I mean, marriage life is a long time. You don't see that when you're young and you want to get married mm. soon. And to wait another one, two, three, even six months will probably be like eternity for some of these couples. But marriage is very long. Hopefully it's very long. It's meant to be very long. It's meant to be lifelong. So you're not going to be missing out permanently. Um, I think that's it. The yeah, spiritual attitude must be paramount. We just embrace it and accept that it's God's will. And um, put into place your alternative plans. Robert, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate you uh, giving us your time and your thoughts on uh, the content that we've discussed today. Do you have any closing remarks? Well, I'm always worried about where we're heading as a society, as a culture. I'm very worried about young people, younger generations and their faith because more and more it's diminishing. I don't know if I've given you this stat before, but I know from our surveys of students in Catholic schools that are in the Archdiocese of Sydney, and this will be representative of Catholic schools and government schools and non-Catholic religious schools probably across Australia and the world. We're seeing, in year seven, we're seeing 11 and 12 year olds, where 13% of them either don't know whether God exists or don't believe he exists. That's 13%. Or either agnostic or atheist. And by our same Surveys and these are very large samples, the largest I know in the world. Each survey every two years is 17,000 students on average. We're seeing that these same year seven students, by the time they get to year 11, 33% of them don't know whether God exists or don't believe that he exists. So we move from 13 to 33%, that's a 20% increase in the number of students who become agnostic or atheist while they're still in Catholic school. That's a huge challenge to our schools, for our schools, huge challenge for our families, huge challenge for our parishes, 
I don't know if we're meeting that challenge. Uh, but it's broader than that. Across the world, all young people in general, faith is dying. Where faith dies, that makes those with faith more vulnerable in the future. What type of society will we have when the predominant powers are people without faith? Where will our freedoms be to practice our religion then? To go. What we're seeing now with the coronavirus and the shutting down of churches and our non-access to the sacraments, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera. it's not a religious persecution. But we've now got the mechanisms in place where we could shut down churches and access the sacraments if we wanted to, if there was a religious persecution. And if our future leaders coming from current generations are not religious, have a disdain for religion, are anti-religious, then heaven help us in those days. Anyway, God lives. You always live. There's always hope. Keep praying. Thank you very much.